Hello, this is Stuart Fleming. Tonight we're going to continue our work with Subversion, working with a local repository. And I have a HR base application open here. I have over on my left a Subversion test uh, environment created. And I'm going to start by versioning this application. So we're going to um, I think in earlier versions, you actually wanted to click on the HR, and it, you know if you clicked on this, it might actually version that. Um, it's just some of my testing seemed to do that. I'm going to click on there out of pure paranoia, and we'll ver version the application. And we have the HR subversion, and we're going to version it to the trunk area. And these are the files that it's going to skip. I should go back here. You could put comments in here. Um, I'm, I'm going to say import. And these are the files that it will skip. Um, and then we're going to do a checkout. And you can see now that it's adding all of these different files. And Then it closed it. I guess it deleted it out. I'm not sure exactly. But then it did a checkout. And now if we refresh this, you can see that we have all of these files here. Now I don't have much in the way of um, data in here, so let's add some stuff. Why don't we just start doing it in the ADFC config. Now you can see down here that we have revision 4. And um, Revision 4, because when I created the branches and tags, it actually included that as part of the revision. On the component palette, I'm going to get a view, and we'll just call this main. All right, now, if we save it, and then we go over to, where is pending here? There it is. You can see now that this file is pending. And um, it's probably a little bit too early to commit it, but we could. Um, obviously, it wasn't in a saved state. And so I've got a comment there. And um, I don't know if it's going to show everything here. There we go. That's on five now. You see that? <clears throat> so if we refresh that. I don't see. Um, oftentimes it writes a little number there. There, some of these. Okay. In this case, it's not writing the number there. That's interesting. For the ADFC config. We're going to double click that and we're actually going to create a JSPX page on there. Now, in this case, you actually have to add it. It doesn't always know what you might want to add. So, whoops, <clears throat> you can see that the X is there and that means that it's waiting to be added. Um, there's my version here, and we do add, and it's just asking for a verification of that. So now this is waiting to be pending, and we're going to say add um, name. Okay, so if we look at our console here, we're now on revision six. Now let's say for the sake of testing that you created a, a mess here and rather than go through <clears throat> and um, try to fix it you could delete out the application now it is problematical with the um, subversion because if we go over to the files you can now see that I have this here I have the application I have a .svn file, and then I have the view controller here. So you have to be careful about what you delete. 
you don't want to write delete the wrong thing. Now, if I delete from here, it's probably not going to be able to delete everything because some of the things that it's trying to delete are actually open in subversion. And you, here you can see that, in fact, it was not able to delete some of these things. So I'm going to have to manually do that. And probably the best thing to do is actually to close JDeveloper for that. F5. Okay, let's go in there. F5. You can see that some of the files are gone. I'm just going to delete the whole application here. Now you could possibly just do a checkout, but I'm rather paranoid. Okay, and now it's all deleted. So let's open up JDeveloper again and do a checkout. Okay, back in, and I choose checkout. And here you can see that I have my HR subversion. <clears throat> and I can place it really anywhere I want. I could have actually just put it in a different directory because it doesn't really matter where it goes. But we'll put it back in the same directory. And now you can see that it's going to be pulling it all in. And over here it's refreshed. Now, some of the changes that I may have made might not be in here because I did a checkout. Um, I don't know if I made any changes after I put this in, but it is a fresh copy. Now, it depends if you're working in a group or on a loan. <clears throat> because if you do a commit and then you decide, well, I made a mistake, and I want to check it out again, or I, not check it out again, <clears throat> but I want to go back to an earlier version. You can do that, but it might affect other people on your team. If you're working alone, well, you've lost a days of work or something. But if you're working with other people, and they also have done commits, and then they've updated their system, that could be a serious problem. So you really need to consider when you're going to commit and how frequently you're going to commit. Maybe you only commit when you're absolutely sure that something's working properly so you won't mess other people up. Okay, we're going to uh, just drop a component on here. Probably need to put that in a yeah, rather large. So we'll surround this with a... <clears throat> Group thing up. And that'll shrink it down to size. There it is. Okay, now I'm at checked out reversion six, pending changes. Let's uh, refresh that. I think I need to save this here. Oh, there it is. <clears throat> now I'm going to commit that. And then we can see that we're on revision 7. This time, and I, I don't recommend this. Well, let's close this out. We could delete the application, but it's kind of messy. I'm going to do a checkout. But this time I'm going to be doing version 6. Okay, so this is where you're actually going back to a previous version. And we can open up the main web page, maybe, and find that there is no button. So we, in fact, were able to go back to a previous version, wiping out what we had done. Now, do a checkout again. This time let's do seven.
and you can see the buttons there. So you can go backwards and then you can go forward again. So this is a very basic video and I'd like you to uh, consider looking at uh, this documentation I'm about to show you for further information because it, there is quite a lot to consider about subversion. But um, this is basically just to get you started. This article by, article by Chris Muir goes over some of the issues that you have to you encounter, especially working with tagging and branching and moving things into production, and I highly recommend it. So please search for this or this on the internet and find it and read it. Another good one is this one. This is a little bit older. And this is working with an external repository. I have a short video on this, on setting it up. But um, uh, this, this is good, but it's a little bit dated. And I'm not sure how up-to-date it is. So I hope that will be of use to you. And uh, have a good evening.